Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So we also have our optional update rolling out for Windows 11 24H2 for November 2024. And as mentioned earlier today, this is our final optional update until the end of January next year, 2025. So we don't get an optional update for the end of December because of the holidays. And because of that, um, there's quite a lot going on in this update. We have 13 new features, so plenty of little tweaks and adjustments and changes. And the update is optional unless you have this toggle turned on. And for this month, it's KB5046740, which was in preview a couple of days ago, which I posted on and has now made its way to the stable version. And is more or less, give or take, with a couple of extra little tweaks and adjustments, the same update um, that it was when it was in preview. Now, there's quite a lot to get through, so I'm just going to get into this. Um, the first is if we head to privacy and security, diagnostics and feedback, tailored experiences is now personalized offers in the out-of-box experience OOBE. That's the first of 13 new features. And I think personalized offers is going to cause a bit of debate when it comes to advertising and privacy and so on. But nonetheless, that's listed as a new feature. And... The next new feature I haven't received yet. Because remember, these are on a gradual rollout. And the features that are on a gradual rollout are controlled. So you may see some of these. You may not. You may have all of them. You may have none. I have a couple, but this one I haven't got. Where the system tray shows a shortened date and time. Also, the notification bell icon might not show if you have set the toggle for do not disturb to on like I have. If the bell icon does not show you, you could then just click the date and time to view your messages in the notification center. So I think um, that's a nice move. I'm um, just tidying up that system tray and I'm actually looking forward to that actually making its way into my region. Then we get a fix which is rolling out gradually for the taskbar and it's regarding the search box. When you choose automatically hide the taskbar, the search box shows an icon not as not as a search box, which was a bug that was really kind of annoying me. But if we toggle automatically, hides the taskbar, you can see now that when we show that, it's still the search box, where previously it was just the icon. So I think that's a nice little step in the right direction. That was something I was personally hoping that they rolled out. Now, the next is regarding the start menu where there is a new feature for this and it's when you right click apps that have been pinned to the start menu okay you should see jump lists now microsoft store has jump lists i'm not seeing that remember these features are on a gradual rollout we're talking about now but if we head to the store pin to the taskbar there's your jump list so that's what you should start seeing when you right click on an app that you've pinned to the start menu I'm just going to mention the next. There's a new feature for touch screens. The update adds a new section for touch screen edge gestures. So you would then go to settings, Bluetooth and devices and touch. And there you can choose if you would like to turn off the left or right screen edge touch gesture. The next one I'm just going to mention. There's a new feature for input method editor. So after you install the, this update, the IME toolbar will hide when apps are in full screen mode. This only occurs when the IME toolbar is active and you type Chinese or Japanese characters, so that's region specific. And then the File Explorer has received a new feature and two fixes. And I'm just going to say at the outset with the File Explorer that we still haven't received a fix for the See More menu pointing up instead of down. Or when you have it maximized, See More menu. You can't get to the rest of the items it points up. Now, I can't understand why Microsoft is not fixing that. But nonetheless, that didn't roll out. So just putting it out there because I see a lot of questions regarding that in the comments. So the new feature for File Explorer is if we head to a file, let's just head into some images here, and you right-click, you can now share content to an Android device from the content context menu in File Explorer and on the desktop. Now, I'm not seeing that. Because remember, these features, some of these features are on a gradual rollout. So to use this feature, you must install and configure phone link on your PC. So just take note of that. And then they're also fixed. Um, there's a fix where there might be more space than you expect between the items here um, in the left pane. And they also rolled out a fix for the search box where apparently it was cut off when the File Explorer window is small. 
So there's a couple of little issues that have been um, fixed in the File Explorer with that new feature on a gradual rollout. Now the next two new features are for dynamic lighting. So for this one, we're going to head to personalization, dynamic lighting. Now I personally don't use this feature, but if you are, um, the first new feature for dynamic lighting is its page will show a placeholder message when there is no compatible device attached to your computer. Also the brightness and effects controls will be off. And then the second new feature is the update adds the forward, backward, outward and inward direction options to the wave effect, if you are using that. And the gradient effect has the forward direction option now. So a couple of adjustments there to the um, dy dynamic lighting settings page. Now the next one is actually quite useful if you use this feature, but I'm just going to mention it because I haven't received it yet. For jump lists, if you hold shift and control and click a jump list item, this opens the item as an admin. And then just going to mention the next, there's a new feature for speech in Windows. The update improves the speech to text and text to speech features in Windows. So this is an accessibility improvement. You might get a message that asks you to update your language files manually and you can get those files from the Microsoft Store and this change affects those of you who use narrator, voice access, live captions, live translations and voice typing, so an accessibility feature. Now we get three important fixes rolling out gradually for display. The first is app windows might collect in the corner of a monitor after your device goes to sleep. This occurs when you use multiple monitors. So quite a lot of fixes rolling out for multi-monitors. The next is there's a fix where mic material might not display correctly. This occurs when you use a slideshow background. And the third fix is um, for secondary displays where some secondary displays might experience lag and screen tearing when a window is in full screen. And then the next fix is one I'm quite happy to see because I use this feature quite regularly on the channel where when you use the show location of pointer of your pointer when you press the control key the circles might be tiny on some displays so that seems to be addressed a little bit i can see that looks a little bit larger and that you can enable in settings and i did post a video on that a while back so just do a search accordingly and here's an issue that's been quite annoying for a lot of users they fixed the clipboard history and might not show no content this occurs even though it is on and you have copied text and images. And then there's one fix on a gradual rollout for mouse and game bar, where your mouse might unlock from the game window. This occurs when you have multiple monitors and open and close the game bar. And because this is a non-security update, it also includes some quality improvements. Now, those are all the highlights um, that Microsoft mentioned from the release notes. Now, the gradual rollout um, where there are other quality improvements we get two new features for the task manager where first of all if i head to my users and i right click disconnect the disconnect and log off dialogs now support dark mode and text scaling i haven't seen that yet but that's still on a gradual rollout as you can see and if we head into our performance page and we look at our disks the performance section now shows the type for each disk. I'm still not seeing that. So as an example, you could see NVMe if you have an N NVMe SSD, which I think is a nice move. Just makes identifying different components um, a lot quicker and easy. And then there's a new feature for our filters. Windows Search runs our filters in less privileged app containers. LP LPACs are like app containers, but they deny more permissions by default. So at the end of the day, this reduces the potential damage that a compromised process can cause. That's the long and the short of that. And then we get three important, sorry, four important fixes where there's a fix for DISM, the start component cleanup task. It did not work properly. It stopped at 71% and shows error 6842. And then there's a fix for PowerShell where the get Windows capability command sometimes fails, then you have to restart your PC. There's a fix for Windows Update. When you install an update, you might get error 0x800F0905. And there's a fix for JPEG files where you cannot use an API to find rotation information. So those are the new features over and above um, the highlights that are rolling out gradually and some fixes rolling out gradually. And then just a couple more to go on a normal rollout. Um, Apparently, the task manager, once again, has received a fix 
where the user page might cause task manager to stop responding when you use the keyboard. And then there's two fixes for graphics device interface plus GDI plus where you cannot get the pro properties of image files using, using GDI plus and if the scaling is wrong when you re encode images in GDI plus. Second last one to mention, there's a fix for raw format images. They show in the wrong orientation. And then there's a fix for WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Apparently it stopped working and would not start up. So there are a couple of extra, but those are just some I thought you may be interested in. And if we head over to our search, just to have a look at the um, build upgrade for Windows 11 24H2. The About Windows dialog for 24H2 after the update has been applied, OS build is sitting on 26,100.2454. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.